Mrs. Geary, back again. Chapter one. Before you watch this video, hopefully you watched the video for the introduction, which is just a couple of pages in the beginning of this text. We're gonna start now with chapter one, Athena and the Prince. Um, things to know, I mentioned in the other video, when we open this chapter, in Odysseus's journey, he's almost home, but it's been taking him a really long time. So at this moment in the story, Odysseus is just about a month away from finally reaching home. Um, his kingdom is called Ithaca, but he's been absent and away from his kingdom for 20 years. 10 years he was fighting in Troy, and it's taken him about 10 years to get back because of the god's punishment for all of the bad things that he did. So we're going to learn about those 10 years that he's been gone and lost at sea through flashbacks that come later in the chapters, okay? But when we open, Athena and the prince, Athena, the goddess of wisdom and strategic warfare, she's um, a friend of Odysseus. She, she cares for him very much, and she's going to be a huge help to him. And then the prince is Prince Telemachus, Odysseus's son, who Odysseus left when he was just a newborn and who is now grown up on Ithaca alone without his father. Well, not alone, with his awesome mom, Penelope, and his nurse, Euryclea. The nurse is like a nanny. Um, but he has not ever seen his father um, and doesn't know his dad. So Athena is going to connect with Telemachus here and give him some sage advice. Here we go. Chapter 1. Athena and the Prince. Sing to me, goddess of song. Sing of Odysseus the Wanderer. Sing of the man blown this way and that after he ruined Troy. Sing of the places he saw and the troubles he suffered. Begin now, daughter of Zeus. Tell the great story again. That little paragraph is what's called the invocation of the muse and all great um, classic epics begin with an invocation, which is like a prayer. The muse is a goddess. So the poet, before sharing the story, would pray, essentially, to the goddess of poetry to help him tell the story well. So that's what we just did. We invoked the goddess, and we asked her to bless our story and to help us tell the story in the best way possible. So let's see if the goddess has blessed us. By now, all those who fought the war and lived were safe at home, all but one man. His heart was on his wife and on coming home. The lovely nymph Calypso held him back. She wanted him as her own husband. At last, though, the gods took pity on him. Well, all but Poseidon. The sea god was away at the ends of the earth, but the other gods and goddesses sat in Zeus's hall on Mount Olympus. See how the mortals blame the gods for their troubles said King Zeus. Why don't they look to their own deeds? We warn them, and when they don't listen, they pay the price. Then sparkling-eyed Athena spoke, Father, let all die who bring it on themselves. But my heart breaks for Odysseus. He longs for his home and his loved ones. A goddess, Calypso, keeps him on her island. She tries to make him forget Ithaca, but he spends his days staring out to sea. He would be glad just to see the hearth smoke rising from his own land. Great Zeus, can't you pity him? Didn't he win your favor at Troy? Why do you hate him? Oh, my child. How could I ever hate Odysseus? He is the wisest of men. Great are his gifts to us who rule the skies. It's Poseidon who hates him. Odysseus blinded Poseidon's son, Polyphemus, the Cyclops. Poseidon won't kill Odysseus, but keeps him from reaching home. Let's think about this. How can we help Odysseus? Poseidon should not stand against the rest of us. Father, if it pleases you, I know what to do, Athena said. Send Hermes to Calypso's island. Have him tell Calypso that you want Odysseus to go home. I will then go to Ithaca and inspire Odysseus' son with courage. He must do something about the suitors the men who wish to marry Odysseus's wife, Penelope. They are living in his father's halls. He must seek news of his father and make his own name in the world. 
Athena put on the sandals that carry her like wind over the earth. Down she swept from Mount Olympus. She stood, spear in hand, at Odysseus's gates. She looked like a warrior. The suitors were playing dice in front of the doors. They were eating Odysseus's cattle and drinking all of his wine. The first to see her was Prince Telemachus. His heart was sad. If only his father would drop down from the clouds, Odysseus would drive these suitors away and take back his, take back his place as king. Greetings, stranger, the prince said to the goddess. You are welcome here. He led her inside. He took her spear and placed it on a rack, and then he called for the servants to bring food and wine. Pause. This act that Telemachus is doing by welcoming a stranger into the halls of Ithaca without knowing her, but taking, um, taking the spear and then giving food and wine is a practice called Xenia, and it was the ancient Greek practice of hospitality, and it was how all Greek citizens were supposed to treat strangers who may have traveled and who may be bringing news. You as the guest had a responsibility to leave your weapons at the door, to come in, to tell the news that you had, and the host would then give you food and wine and maybe a bath and, and a place to rest um, if you were weary. So that's an example of Xenia. It's spelled X-E-N-I-A. Back to the story. Now the suitors swaggered in. They feasted, drank, called for music. Telemachus leaned toward his guest, Athena. He just doesn't know it's her. Who are you? Where are you from? What brings you to Ithaca? The goddess told him she was a traitor and an old friend of Odysseus's. I heard that he was back, she said. I see that the gods still keep him away. I can tell you, however, Odysseus is alive. He won't be gone much longer. Now tell me, are you his son? You look a lot like him. She knows it's his son. She's just playing a trick. Yes, I am his son, Telemachus said. My father must be the unluckiest of men. Oh, how I wish he were here at home with his family. Still, said Athena, the gods have given this house some luck. Look what a fine son they gave Penelope. But tell me, who are these men? Uh, look at them, making pigs of themselves in your house. Well, my friend, once this house was rich, Telemachus said. Now the gods have changed our luck. It would be better if my father had died at Troy. All Greece would honor him. Instead, he's lost. Now the gods make new troubles for us. You see these men? They are nobles from nearby lands. Each one wants my mother to marry him. And they won't leave until she chooses one of them. They'll eat our food until it is gone. My mother won't have any of them. But she can't bear to tell them. Oh, if only Odysseus would come home, Athena said. He would drive them from his halls. Still, there is something you can do. You should fit out a ship. Go talk to Pelos and talk to King Nestor. I'm sorry, go to Pelos. It's an island. And talk to King Nestor. Go to Sparta and talk to King Menelaus. They may have news of your father. If he is alive, brave it out for one more year. Um, if he is dead, think of a way to kill these suitors in your house. You are a boy no longer. It is time to be a man. Your words give me courage, Telemachus said. Won't you stay and rest? Let me give you a fine gift, such as a host should give to a stranger. That's Xenia. No, no, I must go back to my ship, the goddess said, still in disguise. Save your gift for my return. It will bring you a good reward. With that promise, Athena left. The prince was filled with wonder. Surely that must have been a god. He returned to the suitors, filled with the god's courage. The great bard, a traveling singer and storyteller, the great bard Phemius was singing for the Greek heroes, singing of the Greek heroes and their journey home from Troy. Suddenly, Penelope appeared in the hall. Phemius, she cried. You must know other songs. Stop this one. It breaks my heart. There's a picture. Those are the suitors drinking all the wine. There's, I think, Telemachus glaring at them. And then there's Penelope in the background, sad because she's hearing the song of all the heroes who died at Troy. And she thinks that could include her husband. Mm. 
Why, mother, said Telemachus, bards and their songs are not to blame if Odysseus is not home. Zeus is to blame. Now, go back to your room. Tend to your spinning and your weaving. Keep your serving women working hard. As for giving orders, I am the master of the house. Penelope was amazed at her son. She went up to her room, and there she cried for Odysseus until at last Athena sealed her eyes with sleep. The suitors were praying loudly. They all had the same prayer to be Penelope's husband. You suitors are a plague on my mother, Telemachus said. Tomorrow you will all leave my palace, feast in your own houses, eat up your own food instead of wasting ours, or you'll see how Zeus will pay you back. For a moment, the suitors were shocked into silence. They had never heard the prince speak that way before. Finally, Antinous answered him. <laughs> well, Telemachus, only the gods could teach you to talk so high and mighty. Why blame us? It is your mother's fault. For years she has promised to marry one of us. She says she will choose when she finishes weaving a burial cloth for Laertes, Odysseus's old father. It is all a trick. Every day she weaves... And every night she undoes her work. This is our answer to you, Telemachus. Send your mother away or make her choose one of us. As long as she holds out, we will stay here feasting. Telemachus spoke with calm good sense. Antinous, how can I drive my own mother away? No, I'll tell you what I'll do. I mean to sail for news of my father, and if he's still alive, I'll wait for him. If he's dead, I'll come back and hold a great funeral for him. Then I will give my mother to one of you. Later, Telemachus walked alone on the beach. He prayed to Athena for luck and courage. She appeared to him in the form of Mentor, his father's old friend. You are the son of Odysseus and Penelope, she said. You can stand against these suitors. There's not one man of sense or goodness among them. Now, I'll help you fit out a ship. Get supplies for 20 men. I'll go around the town and choose your crew, and we will leave at once. The suitors feasted in the hall. They made fun of Telemachus. The gods help us, one of them shouted. He wants to kill us all. He's off to hire pirates. Or maybe he's just buying poison to put in our wine. <laughs> Who knows, said another. He might drown like his father. What a boring job he'll leave us, dividing up all the goods left in his father's halls. Even if he returns with Odysseus himself. What can he do, said another. Fight us all. <laughs> Telemachus headed to his father's storeroom to gather supplies for his trip. He asked his old nurse, Eurycleia, that's his nanny, for help. He made her promise not to tell Penelope his plans until he was gone. Athena, disguised as the prince, went into the town. She borrowed a ship and rounded up 20 brave young men. She hauled the ship down to the water. Then she went back to Odysseus's hall. She reigned sleep over all the suitors. Then... She became mentor again, and she called out to the prince. Telemachus, your crew is ready, she said. They're waiting for your orders. Come now, no time to waste. Telemachus came with her to the harbor and found his crew waiting. Come, friends, let's get the supplies aboard, he commanded. When all was stowed away, they climbed aboard. Athena led the way, and Telemachus sat beside her. They cast off and raised the mast. Athena sent a strong wind over the wine-dark sea, the men poured out their offerings to the gods. Over the side of the ship, a little wine. The ship went plunging all night long and through the dawn. End of chapter one. So important things to notice here. Telemachus is aided greatly by Athena. Athena is in multiple disguises. Athena has received permission to help Telemachus and Odysseus from Zeus. And Poseidon is being kept in the dark. No one wants Poseidon to know what's happening. Um, and you'll figure out why as we read more. Um, what else? Telemachus suddenly has this sort of manly courage. Um, and he owes that to the help of the gods. And it's so critically important to understand that the ancient Greek culture believed that anything good, anything that was a blessing in their lives, they had to say thank you. They had to attribute that to the gods helping them. And that's one of the reasons why Odysseus has not really been able to get home because he wasn't so grateful or gracious during um, the end of the Trojan War. So we're going to see that as we get into later chapters. But I hope you enjoyed reading. Join me for chapter two soon.